best mediation tips for clients the week before. Study your financial situation, study the documents before you go into the mediation and have any questions you have for your attorney, if you have an attorney, uh, answered before you go into the mediation. The best mediation tips that I give to clients, I don't know if they're the best, the ones I regularly give to people, is um, if you're uncertain about something, tell the mediator that you need to sleep on it. And that's particularly the case if I'm not in, at the mediation. In other words, if the client is mediating uh, directly with his or her spouse, no lawyers involved, and they're feeling pressured that they can always ask to sleep on it. So that's advice that I generally give. Um, other tips are to um, listen more than they talk because it's a free opportunity to look under the hood of what their spouse is thinking or trying to achieve or what they'll ultimately be arguing in court. So um, don't necessarily uh, shut down if the spouse is saying things that they don't like because that may give us the opportunity to argue against that and to prepare arguments against that in the future. There's some great ways to get ready for mediation and really my tips on getting ready for mediation are pretty general and big picture. You can let your attorney take care of the details and the small picture items. And as a client, what you need to focus on are just keeping an open mind. Often the day of mediation, things don't go the way that clients expect them to go. Uh, the mediator might say or do things differently than they're expecting. Their own attorney might say or do things differently. And it's just all about keeping an open mind so that we can hopefully get, you know, over the finish line and get to a settlement. Also, just be prepared for a long day. Mediation can be a really long day. I've had mediations that have lasted over 12 hours. And so being well rested, um, having nutritious food to eat, um, having some reading material to get your mind off of the stress of the mediation during breaks. All of those things can be helpful. Making sure that your children are cared for if you're not done, you know, promptly at five o'clock. Um, that will really help the day go better. And finally, just be willing to compromise. Uh, mediation is all about compromise. But what you can do in mediation is compromise on your own terms, not on terms that are dictated to you by a judge best mediation preparation tips is to treat mediation as though it is the final event uh, to really prepare and have a good sense of where you're at and to have informed your mediator of how important what is important to you uh, and what is in, what you believe may be important to the other side uh, and demonstrate that you've given the mediation a thoughtful response it's really dangerous to walk into mediation and say, my proposed solution is this, and then fight for it. It's far more productive to walk into mediation and believe that you're going to derive an excellent solution uh, and have some trust in that process. Know what you can live on. And, and this is a, a pretty esoteric, ambiguous tip, and I hope it's okay. But think about how important it is to you to be done with this. And it's a very hard thing to quantify, but you know, if you think you're entitled to $500,000 or $400,000 or $40, the question is, how badly do I want out? You know what? I don't want anything. I, I want out so badly that even if I walked away with nothing, know that going in because you could be fighting for an extra $5,000 when really the value to you of being done with it exceeds $5,000. It might be worth 10 times that. So think about how badly do you want out um, versus you know, what can you live with? So if you can live with the bare minimum and be done with it, great. If you're not in a rush to get out and you just want what's fair, then think about what's fair. Think about what you need to live on. And most importantly, know your budget inside out. Know what you can live on, know how much you need. So when the other side says, I can only give you $4,000 a month, you have an argument that says, but the mortgage and the insurance and the car payment, those three alone add up to 5,000 a month. I can't live on 4,000 a month, at least not until I get a job which is not expected to be for six weeks or six months or whatever it is. All right, try to, try to visualize your life after 
the divorce. And if you'll be happy with no money, then go in and take what you can get. Fight as hard as you can, but don't let the day end without getting a deal. So many people say, I wish I'd gotten a deal. The flip side of that is don't take a deal just to take a deal. If you're not sure, sleep on it, think about it, and then call your lawyer the next day and say, I'm okay with it. Will they still do it? If not, so what? You at least had, you didn't make a rush decision. A lot of people make very quick decisions and they regret them. So best mediation tips for a client the week before mediation. I always recommend to a client that they outline. It's nice to put pen to paper, but outline at least three different alternative outcomes to their issue that would be acceptable to them. The, the purpose for this is to get the client out of the mindset that it's got to be one specific way to be okay. It encourages them to be creative and be a little more constructive to the mediation process of looking for alternative resolutions. And that, that mindset is a lot more constructive than someone showing up and say, I've got to have this outcome or got to have that particular outcome. Uh, that's probably the most constructive hands-on tip for the client. I give them material to read, to help them understand what the, the process is going to be like, but also like to assure them the mediation is the least formal method of being able to resolve a case. I'll often encourage them dress appropriately, but comfortably realizing that this process is a far cry from a process where they are testifying under oath, where they are going to be scrutinized, where their statements can be used against them. So I sometimes let them I like that by saying dress comfortably uh, and, and let's try to get this resolved at a time and place where you are the most in charge that you will ever be in the process. My best pre-mediation preparation tip is call your lawyer and let your lawyer know if you want to have a strategy meeting for mediation. Now, many lawyers won't ask you if you want this because they assume you know what they know which is mediation is a pretty calm process. The lawyer goes through it over and over again. And yeah, they're gonna be giving you advice in that meeting that they've given other people, but it's gonna be tailored to your particular situation. Don't lose sleep before mediation. You need to get your rest. And while you're worried about, are you gonna get a settlement and this whole thing to go over and get over with, that's not really uh, the main focus. Yeah, you want to settle, but you may not settle at mediation, but you might very well settle because of mediation. So maybe the week later, a couple of weeks later, a couple of key points get uh, knocked out and then everything else falls into place. So if you're worried about it and you're worried you're going to lose sleep, call your lawyer well in advance and get you that appointment to talk about strategy prior to mediation. Also on uh, the Miles Mason Family Law Group YouTube channel, we have a mediator who gives us a bunch of advice about preparing for mediation and discusses about uh, tips and traps for going into mediation. So I encourage you to check out those videos featuring uh, mediator Suzanne Landers.